Hello and welcome to the Talk Tonight podcast. And today I'm joined with Luke from Sky Fever. How are you, Matt? I'm good, man. And yourself? Yeah, I'm brilliant, brilliant. So you may recognise the uh, the band uh, we featured. Is this the end of the world on last week's Tunes of the Week? It's an absolute cracking song. And uh, join with lead scene just to talk about the album, the band, and just everything. So Luke, first thing I'm going to ask: How did the band come about? Where did you start? Well, I'm the singer of the band four years now, and Tyson, Tyson, the guitar player, formed the band about six years ago. And uh, there's been a few changes in lineups since then, but um, I used to work in a music shop here back in Dublin, and uh, I knew Dan, the bass player at the moment. We were looking for a new bass player, so I got Dan in the band. And then on the day our old drummer left, um, there was another guy I knew from the that came into the music shop I worked in, Carl, the drummer. But we were looking for a drummer that day, and the rehearsal studio that we actually rehearse in, I hadn't seen him for like two years, maybe. He was behind the counter. And I was like, shit, Carl, do you want to be in the band? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> so that was cool, you know. So, yeah. So just as easy as that, it was, uh, it was put together. So um, Yeah, it was just kind of all came together, yeah. yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. So your, um, your album, Is This the End of the World, came out recently. Uh, what was hmm. your process behind the album, like, has it been um, a progression of the past four years or has it been quite a quick process? For the album, a lot of those songs were actually kind of, they would have been written over the past year. Right, um, right. Yeah, so it was just kind of a collection of songs that we had. Um, the title track is, the end, is This the End of the World, we wrote back in November. And then, obviously, when this virus stuff happened, we said, ah, we have to call the album, is this the end of the world? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, no, but it was just, a, it's a collection of songs that we've been writing over the past year and a half or so. Yeah. Brilliant stuff, brilliant stuff. So, what is your process when writing a song? Is it, like, the whole band write it, or is it just, like, you put down the lyrics, and then you come together, you add the bass, guitars, drums? Is it a collective? Yeah, it, it's very collective. It, 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 each song uh, is kind of created differently. You know, for instance, I, I could write a song at home and have it written and just bring it to the guys and we'll just write around it. Or one of the guitar players would just have a guitar lick and, you know, uh, we'll just write a song out of that. So uh, every, everyone c contributes 100% uh, to the songs. So, uh, but yeah, we're blessed because it's funny, we're always writing songs. Even after rehearsal, we'll run through the set or something and we're trying to leave to go home and we're packing up our gear and somebody plays something and we get the guitars back out and say, <laughs> oh shit, that's cool. And then we write a song. So yeah. yeah. That's amazing. So it, it, comes, it comes from everywhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's probably the best way for it to be, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. natural, yeah. yeah. Exactly, yeah. So obviously you, um, you've played gigs. Yeah, you know, that's a given. What's the best gig you've played? Well, uh, for me, it would be when we supported the drummer from ACDC in Dublin, uh, Chris Slade. He was doing, um, he was on the album uh, Thunderstruck for ACDC, and uh, he was doing a world tour, and we got a support slot. So, uh, a really big, really big venue here in Dublin, and um, that was an experience. Yeah, I'd say that was the, definitely the best gig. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Re really cool guy too. How many people were there? Uh, that gig, I was it was over one and a half thousand, I think. Bloody hell! I, don't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't give a figure, but uh, it was, it was a big gig. Yeah, yeah it was good. What pay for? Yeah. So, have you got any plans for upcoming gigs? Obviously, current ongoing situation makes it a bit difficult. But exactly, exactly. Like we, we haven't even looked into it. We're doing a lot of recording. Um, Obviously, we just we just finished our big pro project. Uh, is this the end of the world? Uh, so we're still promoting that and and things like that. But in terms of concerts and gigs, we don't know what's going to happen. Have you managed to play any of the new songs live yet? Um, some of the tracks on the album we all we've had in our set for the past year and a half or yeah. so. Yeah. Oh well, at least um, to been in the public eye, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but uh. We're dying to gig. We're dying to gig, but we don't know. <laughs> Nobody knows what's going to happen. So 
And uh, well, I mean, you say that. I don't know if you've been uh, keeping up with the music news. All these driving gigs have been cancelled today. I don't know where you. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Um, all right. So there was some big bands like the Snuts, the Claws. They were supposed mm. to. They, I mean, the Snuts had a massive, um, like, like uh, I don't know what the word is, like, tour. Yeah, tour. Yeah. They had a tour. They had loads of. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> the venues booked um, yeah. probably about 20, I would say, and they've all been mm. cancelled. I don't know what your stance is on the driving gigs. I don't know if you thought it was a good idea or not, but um, yeah, it's disappointing that they've been cancelled. Mm. 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 That's a, they, No, no, I think it's a great idea, but it's just a case of we're in, we're in limbo, really, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, definitely. In terms of pub, public gatherings and things like that, you know, we just don't know what's going to happen. I can, I personally, I can, <clears throat> I don't see gigs happening for till next year. No, nah. you know, um, particularly in the UK. Yeah, uh, I'm, so I, I'm, have, yeah. I'm due to see DMAs in October. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to happen. No, I don't think so, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, Blossoms was supposed to be on tour in March <clears> or April. <throat> And then um, that got postponed to October mm. and it's been further postponed to next year. Yeah. I, I can see all the gigs doing the same. Yeah. Mm. I mean, as somebody who goes to gigs quite regularly, it's really disappointing because, you know. I know, I know, I know. It's really, uh, I, I, I had a ticket to go and see Ramstein in yeah. Belfast. I was <laughs> really looking forward to it, but that's being cancelled till next year now. So but what can you do? <laughs> No, it's disappointing. Yeah. So obviously, you go to gigs quite a lot. Who are your influences? Uh, well, I'm 27 now. So when I was, my mother took me to see <laughs> when did my my ma took took me to see Metallica when I was seven years old. Bloody hell! <laughs> quite yeah, heavy yeah. For a seven year old. Oh. <laughs> So seven-year-old me was hooked on Metallica. So they'd be, you know, a, a big influence in uh, my musical upbringing. Um, and for sure, bands like Oasis would be a huge influence. Yeah. Um, o Oasis, U2, Metallica. Um, yeah, personally, I'd be a big into the grunge scene as well, like Soundgarden, Chris Cornell, bands like that. But um, if I was to pick two, it would be Oasis and Metallica, which... Really, yeah. which really influenced me and I know some of the guys definitely Oasis as well in the band yeah I think um, I spoke to Tyson he was telling me about how Talk Tonight is one of his favourite songs of all time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, he yeah. loves them yeah I mean Oasis and Metallica are quite contrasting bands you could say I mean they are they are yeah but if, you know if something's good I'll listen to it <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah. so what I mean, obviously, Talk Tonight is influenced by the Oasis song. So, what's your favorite Oasis song? Wow. Well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> I wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, favorite Oasis song. If I was to pick one out of my head straight away, I would say. Oh man, you got me here. <laughs> <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Aquias? Aquias, yeah. Aquias, that's the one, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a, I mean, a good decision. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can't really go wrong. No, I mean, you could say uh, pretty much any Oasis song and people break like is a good song. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> that's what I mean. Yeah. They, do, they just bang out hits. That's all they do. Yeah. Uh, for me, personally. I've got yeah. to say whatever. Yeah. I feel yeah. like for, uh, I mean, I've seen it live now. Um, Liam Gallagher played it. And I just feel like that is just Oasis' best song. I mean, yeah. I've always been a big, bigger fan of like, you know, the strings and the the whole orchestra aspect behind a band. And I just feel yeah. like that brings out the best in bands. I mean, I don't know if you listen to The Last Shadow Puppets. I've heard of them. Yeah, they're, they're, I, 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 yeah. they're very much like what's well, Alex Tan from Arctic Monkeys and Miles Kane with a mm. band and they've mm. got like a massive string section. And okay. I just feel like it gives you more creative freedom rather than just mm. being like a four or five piece 
rock band. It definitely, it definitely uh, brings a new flavor to the band, or you know, um, like recently, like you, if you you listen to our album, uh, we definitely incorporated a lot of synth work and stuff like that mm-hmm. to the album, um, and it really does. It, it just, I, I it, as you said, it opens it up, and it makes you not sound just like any other rock band. Yeah, yeah, because you know. The, um, it was that era has come and gone. I feel like I feel like it was like early two thousands. There was that era of just rock band after rock band. Yeah, you had Kaz, yeah. you had, you had mm-hmm. Razor, like just bands like that. And now yeah. Yeah. they're having you're having to you know do something different. <laughs> and obviously, that's it. That's it. I, I don't. I, I wouldn't say rock and roll has run its course by any means, but uh, it's 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 going to come back in a different form. Mm, definitely, definitely. Yeah. But I mean, what a massive band at the moment is Idols. I don't know if you listen to Idols. I, I, I've heard of Idols. I've heard of Idols. Yeah. I mean, they're they're kind of bringing back that punk era of rock and roll, the the heaviest sound, mm. and it mm. it's an exciting time. I imagine for yourself to be in music because there's so much going on. <laughs> yeah, it's, it, there is so much going on, you know, and uh, yeah. Yeah, we're we're just uh, we're really proud with the 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 album that we released. Um, you know, we think we feel it's different. Um, yeah, definitely. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, we're really proud. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, it's something to be proud of because mm. not every band could release an album and it'd be good. <laughs> you know, which yours is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, thanks. Glad to hear that. And I yeah. said to you just quick before the podcast that is this the end of the world that track in particular is massive which is and that's why obviously we feature on tunes of the week because especially in like he said the uh the world as it is at the moment it's just quite ironic <laughs> let's call that it's very ironic yeah like i said <laughs> we, we we wrote the track and i think it was it was last winter anyway like november and then uh, this happened and <laughs> we had that track and we said oh, we, <laughs> We got to call this album "Is This the End of the World." But, uh, <laughs> so, what are the future plans for yourself? I'm future sure plans, um, because of the current situation, like we did plan to tour, gig, but we can't. No. Nah. So we're just going to focus our energy at the moment on promoting the album. Yeah. Um, we're already back in the studio. We're working on a lot of new songs already. Um, the machine never stops. I'll put it that way. The sky fever machine never stops. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, recently I've been noticing you've been getting a lot of radio players, a lot of international attention as well. Like it's not just been Ireland, UK, like America. No, America. particularly in the in America, yeah, yeah. Do you, We're getting quite a, quite a lot of radio play there. Yeah. Have you any idea why? Um. Well, we graft. We work, we work our asses off. Um, yeah, and I, I, I don't know. We had a few contacts in the states uh, from radio stations that played us before. Um, I mean, Alice Cooper, he played us on his radio station a couple of years okay. back. Very nice. Um, so we had a few contacts, but uh, yeah, just since the album was was released, I don't know. Word, word seems to be getting around America. Uh, between the stations and we're getting a lot of radio play. Have you ever so, played uh, it? We've never been. We were invited, but then again, this thing, <laughs> the, <laughs> the virus, you know, what can we do? I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> we, we, I think we were meant to go to Carolina uh, to play a few gigs there. And um, yeah, but we'll get there. We will get there. Yeah, fingers 100%, crossed. 100% we'll get there. Yeah. So, um, I suppose this kind of leads on. Where do you see the band in ten years? In ten years. Ten years. Oh wait, this oh. Is my favorite question. I got to ask every band. Yeah. Ah, okay, right. <laughs> well, uh, I see us playing stadiums. I see us playing stadiums, making albums, touring, working hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've, you've got to win to that level. Otherwise, what is the point? If, mm. if you're not aiming, Absolutely. there's no point doing it. No, no. A lot of respect for that. And, you know, mm. all, all you need is that one stroke of luck, that one person see you. 
I mean, look what happened to Oasis, that one person. One That's person. it. Well, I, I was just about to quote Oasis. You've got to make it happen. <laughs> you do. You, you know, you do. It, 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 in, some, in some cases, it is just a stroke of luck. But I think you have a bloody good chance if you work your ass off as well. Yeah, yeah. You have a bigger, way bigger chance if you just keep working. <clears throat> so you know, and, and you have that goal in mind. Yeah, yeah. So obviously mm. you've been in the band. Did you say four years? Wait. I, I'm, in, I'm the singer of the band for four years. Yeah. Four years. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. All, all the members, as they are now, have been together four years. <clears throat> no, we have a new guitar. Excuse me. We have a new guitarist, uh, Matt. He's in the band six months. All oh, right. Okay. Um, Dan and Carl, the drummer and the bassist, three years. I'm there four years, and Tyson's there six years. Okay. Had you had any experience with other bands before Sky Fever? Yeah, I mean, I played in a lot of cover bands. I played here in Dublin since I was about 14, 15. I've been in Metallica cover bands, Rolling Stones cover bands, just gigging around, you know, uh, nothing too serious. Um, Just earning a few quid and playing rock and roll, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, a lot of the bands that um, we're speaking to, um, like, they're they're younger. Uh, I'm not being rude, but the style, (laughs) are like, the age, like, 16, 17, obviously, Mm. or 27, I think you said. 27, yeah. So, I mean, is it, like, are you playing, are you targeting a different demographic, or are you just, what are you, what's, like, your target audience? <clears throat> okay, well, originally, okay, with our, say for instance, our social media plans, our marketing, running ads, originally we thought our targets would have been 25 up. Yeah. But since we released this album, we were absolutely shocked, absolutely shocked. Um, our target audience, well, not our target audience, our audience <laughs> um, is probably, I'd say, 16 to 21. Yeah. You say, I, um, I just found stuff like this interesting because yeah, it, it is interesting. Um, but like we're delighted, absolutely delighted. But most of the people following us on Instagram and liking our posts and sharing our posts are between sixteen and twenty-one years old. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you feel it's like amazing. do you feel that's because of your um, platform on social media? You've got quite a few followers. So do you, do you feel like that's your main platform? It is at the moment because we're not gigging. Yeah, yeah, it will cost. But <laughs> <laughs> That's my answer to that, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I can only see you going one way. And that's up. Because like you said, you work hard. We work day and night. It's, it's the only way to achieve results in, in, in anything in life. In anything. Um, yeah. You, you can't just sit in your back and I'm like, expect somebody to give it to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, know. And, then, and then one day and then one day wonder why it didn't happen you know mm. <laughs> yeah because you were uh, <laughs> why it didn't happen when you did nothing <laughs> exactly yeah. i wonder where i went wrong you know <laughs> I can tell, I can tell you one yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, i've got a um, bit of a i'm gonna throw a bit of a care ball at you right now okay if you, if you were let's say, trapped on a deserted island. Right. What's the one album you would make with you? Mm. <clears throat> well, you this is probably going to take up about five minutes of recording time <laughs> just waiting for me to think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mm. Could it be the best of Metallica? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably a Metallica album, something like the Black Album or something like that. Yeah. yeah any particular reason? I grew up with it. Yeah. I grew up with it, and every time I listen to it, it's like I'm listening to it the very first time. Every time I listen to it. That's what, you, yeah, yeah. For me, I mean, this question, I feel like my answer always changes. It, mm. it does just depend on what you're listening to at the time. But one album I always go back to is mm. 
the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust, David Bowie. David. Yeah, yeah. Good um, album. yeah. I, for me, David Bowie is <laughs> a, a genius. <laughs> he, yeah, yeah. He definitely was. Definitely was, yeah. Some of the stuff he said. I, I mean, I don't know if you're a huge fan or if you're a fan at all. I've, I wouldn't be a huge fan, but uh, I would be a fan, yeah. But I feel like even people who aren't fans of his music just appreciate him for what he was. Yeah. Yeah. What what yeah. he did for music. And, um, yeah. I'm going off on a bit of a tangent here, but I, I, I've got to tell you, I watched a um, documentary on the fall of the Berlin Wall. Right. And I didn't realise the impact David Bowie had on it. Mm. Because obviously, you know, heroes. Yeah. That song is based on what he witnessed when he lived in Germany. People mm. trying to uh, get over the wall and stuff. And he played a concert in Germany. And he played it really close to the Berlin Wall. So like, people on the east side of Berlin could also hear it. Really? And that, well. that is one of the main things. Because in the east side, rock music was considered um, like evil. That's right. You had to, you had to um, steal records to go across... To the east yeah. side, and yeah, yeah, smuggle is the word. Yeah, he yeah. played close, and people on the east side that sparked a revolution. Mm. And I don't mm. think a lot of people know these little things what David Bowie did. No, he, 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 he was <laughs> he's an important man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so sorry to go on, but uh, no, no, it's good. Lot it's respect, good. Man. Lot respect yeah. my man. So. Um, mm. Just trying to think a uh, couple more questions. Well, now you have me thinking about that Desert Island question. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring all the albums. <laughs> we, um, so we, we play another game as well. It's Headline, Support, Reject. So this is right. where I give you three bands. It, it's essentially right. Snog, Marry, Avoid, but music edition. So all right, hit me. I'll give you three bands. <laughs> And you yeah. decide who would headline the show, who would right. support, and who you have to reject. All right. So cool. Go for it. From what you've told me, I'm going to give you the three bands of Metallica, Oasis, and U2. <laughs> oh, God. I might be shot for this answer. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd actually have to say. So what was it again? Headline, headline. support, and reject. Yeah, correct. Okay, Metallica headline, Oasis support, you <laughs> too reject. <laughs> uh, I, can, I can feel the people flocking you right now. Oh, they're going to kill me in Ireland for that. They're going to kill me. <laughs> Uh, to yeah. be honest, I'd probably have it Oasis headline Metallica and U2 at the bottom again <laughs> yeah <laughs> no I, lo I love U2's music but just out of those three yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. gotta be gotta be yeah um, well Luke it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you you uh, too man you too so you can stream Sky Fever in the links below um, is this the end of the world out now and it's well worth a listen trust me well worth a listen so Luke again thank you and uh, thanks for watching cheers thank you very much man cheers thank you <laughs>